Hey, what's going on guys? It's Bird Food. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having a good day. Today, we're using one of my level 200 builds and we're going back up to that high level where everyone's got insane damage, insane builds, but it's always a lot of fun. Let's get into it. So as I said, we're at level 200 today. We've got the customary 60 Vigor. Then we're a strength faith build. We've got 64 strength, 64 faith. If we take a look at our flask, we're using the opaline hard tier for the damage negation. Then all of our weapons do holy damage. So we're using the holy shrouding crack tier to give us a boost in that area. We've got a good selection of talismans to give us a boost to our carry weight and our health. And then we've got some chunky armor to give us a boost to our damage negation and our poise. Looking at our weapons on the build, we've got two gargoyle black axes that we can use. Then we've also got the Gargoyle's Black Twin Blade. We've then also got Malekef's Black Blade. Next up, we've got the Staff of the Avatar. And then finally, we've got the Watchdog's Greatsword. As I said, all of our weapons do holy damage, so they really benefit from our stat investment. And there's not much else to say about the build really guys, we're at level 200 so you've got as many points as you like to pour into whatever stats you like. It's more just about the experience, invading at this level where everything's a bit bonkers. Anyway guys, you lot, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Okay guys, so we've spawned into the capital for our first invasion and for this one we're using Malekith's Black Blade. I can see straight away that our opponents are on the ledge above us so I'm making my way up to engage for a nice early fight. When you're fighting more than one person at level 200 you've got to be super vigilant. You've got to kind of, you know, be aware where all your opponents are at all times if you can. Because everyone's doing so much damage, if you get blindsided with one attack, you can get stunned into the next one. And like I said, everyone's doing insane damage, so that could be the end of the invasion very quickly. You can see how easily these guys just nearly kill me, but I managed to get a bit of space. Take advantage of the PvE firing the crossbow bolt in. One big swing and I managed to get a nice double kill for the win. As soon as I spawned into this invasion, I could see that there was a summon down at the bottom fighting the Lendel Knights, so I popped the Golden Vow and get myself ready for action. As I make my way over, this guy's made his way up the Dragon Wing, and I can't see a horse or any other summons in sight. He's bobbing and weaving, trying to be friendly, but I'm sure if he had his mates with him, that wouldn't be the case. So we take him out do him the service of killing him quickly and we'll make our way on to find his friends. I finally caught up to the horse and his second summon and the busy fight in the gargoyle. Let's take advantage of this and try and whittle down them numbers. We managed to finish the host off with a nice charge attack on the Black Axe. I really like that invasion. I love the ones where you start off in one area and you make your way around the level. Uh, you know, the longer invasions that include a bit of a journey. That was fun. GG's. I had an awful spawn into this invasion, absolutely nowhere near the horse in this summon, although I could see him up on the higher level there on the roof. So I do a bit of harassing with the jar cannon. I don't know how some of these shots didn't connect and do any damage, but you know, it's always fun just to do a bit of porking like that. A quick reposition with the bloody finger and hopefully we spawn into a more favourable position to engage. I 
I love the Ash of War and the Staff of the Avatar. There's nothing more satisfying than killing someone with the power of the ass cheeks. And also, speaking of the Ash of War, the Ass Slam, it does a surprising amount of damage. You don't see people using this weapon too often, but I think with the right stat investment, the boost of the holy damage, as you can see there, the Ash of War does a lot of damage and people often don't expect it. We're still using the Staff of the Avatar on this invasion, so let's see if the Gluteus Maximus can take a couple more victims. And there we go, the cheeks take another victim. Another good thing about the Ash of War is the Hyper Armor. You can see there, we've powered through any incoming attacks and landed it and we've got the kill on the summon. So this is our first invasion with the Watchdog's Greatsword and you'll see the holy damage coming through again on this invasion. The Ash of War on this one is the Golden Lands and again with that boost of the holy damage it's capable of putting out some insane damage numbers. I also really love how the Watchdog's Greatsword looks. I know it's not an easy weapon to get, you've got to do a bit of farming from those hard Watchdog enemies to get it, but it's so fat looking, it's just so different to all the other Greatswords. I think it looks so cool, definitely one of my favourites. And you'll see there some big damage from the Golden Lands, plus you get the added bonus of the follow-up projectiles. You might notice here that I go for a parry and miss, I do have a shield on this build as a parry option, but at level 200 I wouldn't really recommend parrying. If you go for the parry and you miss, you can often eat a lot of damage, a lot of attacks, and it's just too dangerous. You can die very quickly at the expense of trying to make a parry, so... I've got it on the build, so I've got the option to do it, but it's not something I do very often at all at this level. We've got the Gargoyle's Twin Blade out for this invasion. This was the best Twin Blade option that scales with strength and faith, so obviously it's going to take the best benefits from our start investment. Let's see how it performs, see what kind of damage it does. We nearly get a kill on the summon there with the Ash of War early on in the invasion. You can see we are doing some very good damage with this weapon, but it's a bit of an awkward fight in this cramped corridor. You know, it's not very pretty, but it looks like we're going to be able to take this summon out and then focus on the host. The host makes his way out onto the balcony and I remember when this happened, it proper threw me. I forgot all about the invisible bridge. I was just sat there like, why is he floating? <laughs> But the host queefs and falls off anyway, and we get the win. This is a pretty cool place for invading. It's not somewhere I often get the chance to invade because I often avoid the uh, the lake of rot like the plague because invading in the actual lake of rot area is just horrendous. But this area after the lake of rot is pretty cool, pretty sweet place to invade. So, you know, it's funny invading in these places when you don't unlock it with every build. But this build was actually the first character that I played through the whole game with. So, 
you know, every area is pretty much unlocked on this one. Makes a nice change from my usual builds anyway. Bit of a weird Matrix moment now with the summon. We obviously don't have the best connection to him right now, so I switch my attention onto the horse and try and get a bit of damage in there while I can. But I do get a chance coming up shortly to take out that summon, so the connection issues aren't really too much of a problem. Take him out, focus on the horse, to try and get another win in this invasion. We get the horse at one shot and then the elevation on the stairs do us dirty. Lucky boy went down the steps and he dodged our attack and again the elevation on the stairs really saving this guy's ass. But he's on the back foot, you can tell he's struggling, waves of piss comes out. Roll through that and it's nearly a done deal with this guy and on to the next one. This was a really fun invasion. This was one of those invasions where it turned into a bit of a personal battle. I invaded this host on quite a few occasions over the course of this session. This time we had a random summon with him who would get rid of with relative ease shortly, but we go on to have an epic fight with this horse. Over the course of our eight encounters, we both had a few wins. He got a couple, I got a couple, but this was definitely the fight of the bunch. Definitely one for the scrapbook, and definitely the one to feature in this video. What I do absolutely love about this fight is that it's just two players with honest builds going toe to toe and seeing who comes out on top. There's no spell spam, there's no moon veil spam, you know, there's no crazy bleed builds to worry about. Obviously his sword does a bit of bleed build up, but it's nothing really that's going to ruin what is a good fight. It's just two honest blokes having a good old scrap. But at this point I had a big decision to make, you can see I've only got a smidge of health but so has he. Do I back off and try and heal or do I be brave and try and go in and get the kill? As you can see we went in, tried to get the kill and it worked out in our favour. What an absolutely awesome invasion, GG to that man, well deserving of the bow. <laughs> We're back at it here with the staff of the Avatar and on this invasion we actually get a co-invader. The good thing about level 200 is it is quite active so you do often get co-invaders at this level. Although I think maybe in this video this is the only time I feature a co-invader but it does happen. 200 is quite active. If you invade a two-man you know, two group, you will get co-invaders. 2-1 was just a good level to invade at. As I've said throughout this video, the damage is crazy. People have got crazy builds, but it's really fun. It's a different experience than invading at low level.
Our cull invader on this occasion has done an awesome job with the horse, keeping him occupied, he's got him to low health. I noticed the situation, switched targets and took advantage of that good work that our cull invader did and got that big final kill on the horse. GG's guys, good invasion all around. I'm sure we've all been there when you spawn into an invasion and you get that little feeling in your gut, call it your invader instincts, but this time round, I was right to listen to it. Golden land there, proving it's worth once again. Such a great Ash of War, big damage, looks really cool, and again, as I mentioned earlier, you get the follow-up projectiles, which can often bag you a kill. Something else to mention about this build is that we do have the Misericord in our off hands and it's equipped with Beast Raw. It can be a really good option to finish off low health targets. We don't use it often throughout this video, but we do have it as the option to use if we need it. That was a good fight, two ultra great swords going toe to toe, some big swings, some big damage. On this occasion we got the win, GG's dude, maybe next time. And the cheeks claim yet another victim. See the damage there with a one shot. Such an underrated Ash of War, guys. Definitely get on it and give it a try. I came across this guy who was busy with the gargoyle, and at the time I did feel a bit bad about jumping in and ganking him with the gargoyle, but. I'm pretty sure he was torn to tongues, either that or he'd had one or two summons with him previously who has died, I'm really not sure. But either way, we treat everyone equally and we bring the fight. This was a really cool location for this fight, another example of somewhere where I don't usually invade because on most of my builds I don't turn the capital to ash. But as I said, this was the first character that I actually completed the game on, so everywhere's unlocked and everywhere's open. This is a really quick invasion, we do do some really good damage but the horse clearly hasn't levelled his vigour too well. There's no excuse for this at level 200, when you've got this many points you should have at least 60 vigour, no excuses. Another really solid win there with Malekith's Black Blade. But guys, this is the last invasion of the video. I hope you've had a good time watching this one. Level 200, like I said, is a proper good experience. It's very different. You've got to make sure you invest in your vigor. But besides that, you can just go crazy. You can have whatever kind of build you want. There really is no limitations when you've got 200 points to invest into whatever you want. Anyway, guys, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like the content and you're not subscribed, maybe consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. 
Either way, guys, as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everyone who stops by, whether you subscribe or not. It's all about watching the content, sharing the content, and enjoying our invasions. Anyway, look after yourselves, look after each other, enjoy the rest of your week, and take it easy.